watching the It's Her Time podcast with Cody and Jess. Welcome back to the It's Her Time podcast. My name is Cody Sanders, and I'm a holistic health practitioner and functional nutritionist. Today's episode is an episode that I have been looking forward to diving into with a really amazing expert. Her name is Amy Wilson. She has a background as a um, in pharmacy and pharmacology, as well as in nutrition and in fitness. And today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of Ozempic and give you more of a holistic health practitioner's point of view on this. We want to make sure that as we are deciding what is the what are the right tools for our body that we're choosing the right things for us that are going to support our long-term health. So we're going to talk about, like I said, the benefits and also the cons and help you to understand how you can work with your body and make it so that your body is your own secret sauce. But before we do that, let's join Jess for a Mixers Girl Say. Today on our Mixers Girl Say, we actually wanted to talk about a fun convention mm-hmm. that Mixers was able to be a large part of last month. Yeah. and share why this was such a big deal to the company as a whole, but also how this impacts you as a listener and a community member of Mixers. So Mixers was asked to participate in an expo called Expo West. This Mm -hmm. is the largest health and wellness convention in North America. And then North America, I was going to say the world. It's huge, but maybe it is North America. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I don't know. It could be the world. It's the universe. I know it's the largest in the States. Yeah. So the reason why this was such a huge deal for mixers is because you have to go through a really mm-hmm. lengthy application process and have all of your products approved as natural products. They review your supplement panels. They you mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a big like a deal. Fine tooth comb. They're going through everything and making sure that you have exactly what you say you have mm-hmm. in your products and that they are all sourced from the best ingredients. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so Mixers was selected as a business that could attend this expo. But what I want to tell you is that Mixers was showcased in the hot product section, which is the section of businesses that are um, businesses that are trending, businesses that are being talked about, businesses that are doing things differently than the norm. Mm-hmm. And that was such a huge compliment to Mixers. What we loved is that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people that come around Mm -hmm. this convention and sample your products, get to review your products. And we had so many compliments as well as women expressing their gratitude and partners and spouses expressing gratitude for Mixers finally being a business that is tackling these taboo topics. And it was such a huge compliment to us because we're in the space of so many health and wellness brands at this expo. And we were complimented on opening up about topics such as menstrual cycles, low libido, insomnia. um, Menopause. Yeah, Yeah. menopause. Yes, everyone was going nuts over over the fact that Mm -hmm. we're talking about menopause and we're helping provide solutions for women in menopause. So the reason that we wanted to share this with you is, yes, it's a fantastic company win, the fact that we were selected and able to showcase our brand at this expo. But the reason I'm sharing with you is because we want you to know that we are genuinely out there doing the best we can to truly provide the best products for women's health on the market. And we need help sharing the power of Mixer's products. Um, We need exposure. We want more and more women to know about um, the solutions that our products provide. And so we just would also love for you to help us in the sharing. And hopefully you will actually start to see Mixer's on even more shelves of some of the wellness grocery stores that you may shop at. (laughs) So Look out for mixers in more places. And thank you for being a part of our community. Thank you for being a part of our growth journey. And yeah, we just wanted to share this win and the reason why this was such an important thing for our business. So thank you so much for being here and enjoy the episode. Mixers is a company made for women by women. Each of our products have been carefully and lovingly crafted to support you in all stages of your life, providing you with the optimal health you deserve. Each ingredient we handpick is 100% all natural, backed by science and chosen specifically to better your life physically, mentally, and hormonally. Each product empowers your body to take charge of its monthly hormonal shift and flows, empowering you to live life to the fullest. Let mixers take care of your needs from sunup to sundown, and you take care of the rest. 
check us out at mixers.com. M-I-X-H-E-R-S. All right, Amy, let's give you a chance to say hello to our audience and tell us a little bit about you, what your background is, why you love talking about these types of subjects. Hello, and thanks for having me. So I am, I say I'm like a triple factor. I am a (laughs) board-certified geriatric pharmacist. I am a certified nutrition coach, and I have been in the fitness industry as a certified fitness pro since I was 17. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) So I've kind of like been around the whole gamut. And yeah, I am very passionate about actually keeping people off of medication or getting them off of medication. We're in America. We think one pill is great, 20 must be better, but really, really it's not a good thing to be on lots of medication. And we can so prevent a lot of disease states by nutrition and fitness. And I just, that is my passion. My Actually, my mission in life is to keep you out of my nursing homes. I that is it. my mission. I love it. And I'm with you. I joined that mission. So I know you have a background that's just absolutely perfect for the topic that I want to talk about today because you're going to have that fitness background, the pharmaceutical background, and the nutrition background. So this is perfect. So yeah, today, like I talked about in the intro, we're wanting to just kind of give a more um, a, a perspective from us as holistic health practitioners on Ozempic. And as it's also known as semaglutide, there's a lot of other brand names. But now I don't know about you, um, Amy, but I get questions constantly about whether or not I recommend it or if I think it's a good thing to do or if it's, you know, because I get the appeal. I get the appeal of why people are um, looking for a solution. You know, a lot of women especially have um, weight loss resistance and it can be very frustrating as you're, you know, doing all the things, you know, probably what you were doing when you started in the fitness industry at 17 Mm -hmm. is not probably what you are doing now in order to keep the same, you know, results that you maybe got back then. You, it's, it changes. And so it can be very frustrating and um, it can be very tempting. And I'm with I'm with all of you. I see all of these great results. I see these uh, people in my life who are using semaglutide and are just shedding this weight and they're just looking great. They're feeling great. And, um, but I'm always something that's like, I'm questioning, I'm watching, I'm really paying attention to like, how are they really? Like, what are mm-hmm. some of the things that are they're maybe not talking about, you know? And is it is it the only, you know, means to the end or are there other things that we could be doing that can help us for better long-term health? So I know that's a whole thing, but that's what I hope we can get into in this conversation. Absolutely. I mean, we can really dive into this conversation yeah. and I'm not going to bash anybody who is on it or looking to be on it. Right. Believe me, like you just said, I look at it too and say, dang, yeah. Dang. Yeah. Uh, me. <laughs> and, 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 but mm-hmm. I'm looking at what happens in five years, mm-hmm. what happens yep. in 10 years, what happens with longevity. And yeah, where do you, do you want to start at the beginning of, of Ozempic? Yeah. Or? Let's just start. Yeah. Let's start maybe at the very basics of stuff. Like, first of all, maybe there's some listeners, I feel like it's everywhere and I feel like everybody's heard of it, but maybe there's some listeners that are like, I don't even really know what it is. So let's maybe get a little understanding of what Ozempic or semaglutide is. Well, if you look on your phone and you look mm-hmm. on all the news channels, you will see such and such lost weight on this weight loss drug. Yeah. That's what they're saying. They're they're, they're calling it, yeah, weight loss drug. Mm -hmm. So more than likely that is Ozempic, Wagovi, Monjero. There was in a, they're in a classification called a GLP-1. It's glucagon-like peptide one. Mm -hmm. It is a huge, huge breakthrough in science. I'm I'm not going to discredit that at all. It is a hormone that Mm -hmm. is in our body naturally in our stomach. Right, And what they found out is that it helps with us feeling full. It does help with insulin resistance and it can decrease someone's A1C. Now, an A1C is a marker of how your blood sugar is doing. And when you prick your finger and you get the blood or you Mm -hmm. go get your blood test, you're going to get a blood glucose level that is at that time. Mm Mm-hmm. And A1C is a 90-day look back to see how you've been doing in the past 90 days. So for diabetes, it was a great find. Yeah. However, it has this wonderful side effect of you also can lose weight on it. And how it works with weight loss is that it will dampen 
some of the, I would say the noises in your head, for mm-hmm. someone who's very hungry. Yeah. Um, and it will cause you to lose your appetite. Now I know everybody's going, sign me up. Sign me up. Sounds that great. That is yes. exactly <laughs> what I need. But yeah. I'm going to tell you the reason why you have these noises in your head, mm-hmm. the reason why you're hungry all the time is because you're starving your body and you're not feeding what it needs. Yep. You can stimulate your own GLP-1 by eating protein. Yep. By eating. So what's the problem with the GLP-1? If it's like this miracle drug and people are losing weight and they look great mm-hmm. and they supposedly feel great, but I'm going to say, uh, yeah, are they really? Because what I'm hearing from Me people too. using it is that they don't really feel good. And Sharon Osborne is a good example of that who lost a lot of weight. And she's like, I just don't feel good. It's not, it's not, it's not good for me. So what happens? Well, I'm going to talk about the chemical physical physiological things that happen in your body. Your body needs amino acids. It absolutely does. When you stop eating and you are not fueling your body with what it needs, our body is one big chemical reaction and it will do everything possible to survive. Mm -hmm. Whether you help it or not, it's going to try to survive. So for amino acids, it's going to get it from your muscle tissue, right? Well, no muscle, you're tanking your metabolism. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then no muscle, where's your structure? Mm -hmm. Where's your support? It's not there. Yeah. And one of the big admissions in nursing homes are Mm. false. Yes. And as midlife women, if you're midlife, that should be scary mm-hmm. because you don't need to be falling now. And then here's the other thing. Where are you going to get your vitamins and minerals? Um, your bones. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So what? this is what I am worried about. And I kind of coined it calling it old lady syndrome <laughs> is that we're going to see 30, 35, 40 year olds yeah. with the chronic, with the age, or I guess it's a bio age of 20 to 30 years older than they really should be. I know, right? I'm concerned and about that we're too. Skinny. Yeah. We're skinny. We're mm-hmm. skinny. And the thing yeah. is, we have to have we have to change the narrative that skinny is not healthy. We right. have to change that. Now, I get that I want to be in my skinny jeans. I want to mm-hmm. do this, but we're doing everything wrong to stay in this stagnant state mm-hmm. of being fluffy. Yeah. And it does take work. And I think that's the problem sometimes that we want that easy button. We want that, oh, but if I just take this injection, I don't have to think about food and the weight just comes off and I can get into this dress. Okay. That's today. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at your future self. I want you to look at the lady that is staring back at you in the mirror in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Is she saying, girl, you took care of me. Thank you. Right. Or is she saying, man, if only, I know, if only. And that's what I'm afraid of is is we're going to see a lot of if onlys and we're going to see a lot of younger people ending up in the nursing homes who just thought they were just doing it to get to a healthy weight. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Amy, I'm right there with you with all of this. I always talk about how, you know, our muscle is our longevity organ. It is mm-hmm. what will help us to age gracefully. And as women specifically, we are susceptible as we start going through different phases of our life, as our sex hormones start to decline, we're already susceptible to lose muscle mass and to lose bone mass and to do all this. But if we are speeding up the process, because a lot of people are getting onto this drug. I mean, I know they are all ages, but I know a lot of women who are starting this in their 20s and 30s. Those are the ones Mm -hmm. that are asking me. And you're right. They're going to age their body so much faster. But in the the exact moment, like this moment now, we don't think about that. But in 30 years, we're going to be maybe regretting it because it's really hard for us to go back. We can't really go back and get that time. It's what we are doing today that's really setting us up for success for tomorrow and beyond. And so, yeah, I am concerned about all of this as well. And I think we do need to weigh that in when we're considering whether it's worth it. We need to think about longevity. It's yes. not just about the size of the genes or, and, I, and I'm not a big fan of the scale. I'm not a big fan of what your number is on the scale. Yeah. We need to think beyond that. We need to think about healthy. We need to think about preventing disease. We need right. to think about getting stronger. And really we can age backwards by adding muscle. And that so is the key that as women, I think we 
have been fighting that for so long that we've been told, oh, but muscle is not feminine. Mm. Muscle is, you know, muscle will make you look like a guy. I don't want to look like Arnold. I mean, that was that's a lot of my clients who come in is like, I don't want to like. I'm like, girlfriend, you're not going to look Arnold. Like you just don't you know, have the testosterone. You don't. Arnold didn't even have that. the testosterone to do it. He <laughs> had to get some help. So it's not something that you're going to be able to pack on that kind of muscle, but that muscle is going to help you prevent osteoporosis. Mm-hmm. That muscle is going to help you reverse, prevent yeah. type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes. Mm-hmm. There is... It, 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 there's nothing wrong with adding muscle. And that is no. the key to longevity. Oh, 100%. That muscle, I think things have changed. You know, I feel like maybe you and I might be kind of in the same eras here, but I remember that when I first was in the fitness world, it was something where women just wanted to be toned. They Mm -hmm. didn't want to like build muscle. And I think I'm seeing, I'm hoping at least that now women are seeing the beauty in that and not just overall strength. And not that you have to be so chiseled like a fitness competitor, but just that that strong build is really, really beautiful. And I, I appreciate that. But I am starting to see the last year or two where we're kind of going back. We're creeping backwards into that like sickly, skinny, you know, where it almost looks like you're a drug addict because yeah, that, you're what do we call so it? Heroin skinny. Heroin yeah, sheep heroin. back in the day. Heroin yeah. chic back in the 90s, you know, yeah. Kate Moss kind yes. of stuff. And yeah, and I'm just like, no, let's not go backwards, girls. We were we were making huge strides here. So we want to just keep thinking long-term health here when it comes to this. And, you know, there are some great benefits. Um, and I know, Amy, you're, you and I will agree on this too. It is a game changer for the diabetic world, right? It's something yeah. that is very, very yeah. beneficial for them as well. It's also, there's a lot of things that have been out there recently. Um, I like to read both sides when I'm looking at the studies. And so, you know, people that have other addiction issues, they're even finding Mm -hmm. that using some of glutide, for example, if they have an addiction to gambling or even to pornography or other things, it's actually helping to reduce those um, addictions as well. But I do want to just bring it back and say, okay, that is so great. But there are more natural, better ways for us to also be able to give our body and, so, and our brains the support yeah. that it needs. It doesn't have to be um, just this pharmaceutical wonder drug that's you know the only mm-hmm. thing out there that can help us. Well, we've totally messed up our ghrelin and leptin. Mm-hmm. And those are, if you don't know what ghrelin and leptin yeah. are, those are hormones of, I would say, appetite, mm-hmm. of what is, what is making you hungry. I would say leptin sometimes is those noises in your head. Right. And when you don't feed your body, and here's the here's the kicker, you're not feeding your body enough. Right. And most women are like, what do you mean? I'm gaining all this weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was very hard for me at first to understand that a lot of times we're overfed, undernourished. Exactly. And <laughs> what I mean by that is, okay, special K. I mean, I, I can't believe I'm still, I can't believe I'm seeing slim fast commercials again, but this wow. is making its, its comeback. Yeah. All of that stuff is chemical processed crap. There's no nutrition value in it whatsoever. So we're eating all these per se calories with no nutritional benefit. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that, your body's like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Feed me. And so that's why everything looks so tempting. And if your blood sugar is not balanced, that because maybe you're are eating all simple carbohydrates, you're not getting the protein, you're not getting the good fats. No wonder your your body's talking to you saying, yeah. feed. So when you find that you are eating balanced, when you're getting your protein, your fats, your carbohydrates, because carbohydrates are not the devil, simple That's carbohydrates, true. different story. <laughs> but you know, but every once in a while you need a cookie. I'm mm-hmm. not going to say that uh, I don't yeah. eat a cookie. This girl needs her chocolate chip cookies. Quality of life, right? It's quality, quality of life, life and mm-hmm. it's called balance. Mm-hmm. But when you go to the extreme and I'm only going to eat a thousand calories yeah, and you know, Back in the 80s, I can tell you, I knew exactly what everything was in the 90s too. So especially when the 100 calorie packs came out, Mm -hmm. I knew this was 100 calories. I knew an apple was 80 calories. I knew this lunch meat was this many calories. And yeah, that's stressful. But when my clients, and it's like crazy because I have clients everywhere around the world, when I start having them count what's called macronutrients, proteins, Mm -hmm. fats, and carbohydrates, at first there's a big resistance because they're like... Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I did this. I did calorie counting and it's it's so horrible. I'm like, okay, I want you to look at it this way. You're not eating enough. Mm-hmm. And you have to track to make sure that you are eating enough of real food. Mm-hmm. And it's mind-blowing to them mm-hmm. about 
how much they were under eating. Yes, totally. And especially when you bring in real food, things mm-hmm. that are not chemically processed, it's a lot of volume. Yeah. It's it's a lot of volume. A Snickers bar is like 250 calories. You know, any candy bar is about 250 calories. But equal that into a chicken breast, into a salad, into some rice, into a sweet potato, into real food. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy to see the difference. And if you are only eating 250 calories per meal, I'm going to say you're not eating enough. You're definitely not. And it's so true. And yeah, it's we're nutrient starved. That's what's Mm -hmm. happening. We're not calorie starved. And so I hope that, Mm -hmm. I hope we're to the point now where we recognize that it's no longer just the calories in versus calories out scenario. It's more about the nutrients that we're getting in. And I do want to kind of dive into this a little bit more because those nutrients that are in whole foods, that is what is going to signal, like you talked about our hunger hormone. So our leptin hormone that is controlling Mm -hmm. the little thoughts in our head. if our if our body's getting the nutrients, then girls, you know this because I say this all the time. Our symptoms, so if it's hunger, if it's you know cravings, it's, it's things like that. Those are symptoms of us not getting what our body needs, and in this case, it's nutrients. And so, if there's a leptin resistance, which is mm-hmm. what ozempic and semaglutide is helping us is to have a little more leptin sensitivity um, and insulin sensitivity, then we can still do this by getting the the key nutrients that our bodies are craving. And so, so yeah, yeah, that's something that you need to consider. And adding more muscle. So you add more muscle, you are decreasing your insulin resistance because you're adding more insulin receptors. The other issue with ozempic and some of these GLP ones is that yes, it does slow down your your GI tract. Yeah. And that causes you not to be hungry. Mm-hmm. But but there is a serious serious side effect that's called gastroparesis. Mm-hmm. Which is a total shutdown of the GI tract. The issue is with that too is that it's not reversible. Nope. And I have a couple of friends who have gastroparesis. It's from an autoimmune disorder. It's not a pretty disease. Mm-mm. And your life becomes revolved around that. And sometimes you have to have a a surgical procedure to have a stimulator so things start moving. And I will tell you, you don't absorb nutrition right. You become inflamed Mm -hmm. and you start really gaining weight. And some of the articles I've seen of people who've had this have said, if I'd known, if I'd only known. And the thing is, we don't know. When these medications are approved by the FDA, Mm -hmm. there is a known kind of side effects, Mm -hmm. but we don't know until it hits the whole market, when it hits all ages, all genetic profiles of all the side effects that can occur. So you have to go in knowing that this is a possibility and Mm -hmm. being okay with that debilitating side effect. And knowing that it could happen to you. Well, and even knowing, because I think sometimes when we go in and we're talking to our, you know, medical professional and we're being told maybe some of the side effects, it's like, we're going through a list, like, and then this, Mm -hmm. and then this, and then this, but we're not really getting the explanation about what does that actually mean? What is that in our life? So we're talking like, this is a serious side effect that can affect you for the rest of your life. And I hope that everybody heard that. You know, Amy made that very clear. This is something that is not reversible. And is that worth it? Is that, is it worth it, you know, to fit in the skinny jeans? I feel like it's something that you really need to take into consideration. I remember back in the day, um, gastric bypass, I worked with a lot of gastric bypass patients and it was kind of considered this like miracle, you know, procedure that could help all of these people that were morbidly obese and they had all kinds of, you know, um, comorbidities and things like that, that were definitely life-threatening. And so it was always this like back and forth, like, okay, is it worth it? Because we're taking away some of the risks of like, you know, the, the health, you know, risks that come from being or morbidly or be obese, sorry, get that out. Or is it worth it? You know what I mean? Because now we're going to deal with all these other consequences. And what I found a lot with a lot of these clients is, um, I was very like, I was helping them make sure that they're still trying to get as many nutrients as they could into their mm-hmm. body, even though their body was now not able to absorb those nutrients as well for the rest of their life. And we've got a lot of these um, people went through this procedure that now have, they have digestive issues and they have nutrient deficiencies and that is really almost impossible to help to reverse. And so, yeah, I just, I am always 
cautious when things like this come out because I think I've been in this game for long enough that I've seen like, oh, this sounds so good, but is it too good to be true? You know, could we see in five years all Mm -hmm. the commercials? Did you take Ozempic? Call 1-800, blah, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. But we have to realize is that we so want Amazon Prime. We mm-hmm. so want to be able to scroll and get it now. And health is a journey that doesn't stop until we stop breathing. Right. And we have to look at it as a lifelong commitment. And when you start looking at that and looking at it in six weeks, six months, six years, mm-hmm. and thinking about that future self, it's so much easier to obtain and get your mindset right yeah. than being in the now. Because yeah, you take Ozempic now, what if you want to get off of it? You've lost your muscle tissue. So that's why when you go off Ozempic, one, the leptin resistance comes back mm-hmm. threefold. Yeah. So now those now you're really hungry. You don't have the muscle tissue. You've slowed down your metabolism. And that's why the weight comes on plus more. Right. But, you know, this is my favorite is that, okay, so now we have a drug for this. We know that it causes muscle wasting. So now they're developing another drug to prevent muscle wasting. And then you are on, maybe you get nauseated. So now you're on this medication. Well, maybe you're constipated. So now you're on this medication. So one medication just caused a domino effect of polypharmacy. Mm -hmm. Yep. And who nutrition from doesn't that? do that? <laughs> I also love to point out we don't have to go into it much, but it's like, okay, think through this. Who's benefiting from this model, right? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's take it back to like we want to be the ones that benefit from whatever model it is that we are following. And so if it's something that is truly benefiting us most, then it's most likely the best thing for it. If it's benefiting a pharmaceutical company more than it is our own health, then that's something we absolutely have to pay attention to and question. Well, and think about the psychological effect too. Yeah. This is a psychological dependence mm-hmm. it's where, true. where I, you know, I've gotten clients who are so scared to get off of it. Yeah. Because, well, I had this much, I had, I had this much weight loss but I'm exhausted. I can't get off the couch. I have, Mm -hmm. there's just no energy. I just don't want to do anything. But if I go off of it, it's going to cause all the weight to get back. So is there's that psychological dependence that it's causing too. Mm -hmm. And as females, we know that psychological, that yo-yo diet, that up, down, feeling great, then feeling like a failure Mm -hmm. and going through that over and over and over again. When you start working on your nutrition, when you start building muscle, you will have ups and downs because it's life. We have yeah. ups and downs, but we learn how to deal with that. I work with behaviors too. And it's and when you are looking at nutrition, when you are looking at fitness and seeing it for the longevity, you're not having that psychological warfare as much. Oh yeah. And that is huge. I mean, a lot of my clients is like, I just can't believe that weight that was lifted off my shoulders. That Literally. not to diet anymore, not <laughs> yeah. to do all of that, not to feel like a failure is huge for us. Yeah. Literally. I know it is so massive. There's so much that we benefit from when we start working with our body instead of constantly working against it. And I, you know, I was in that cycle for a lot of years being in the fitness industry. You know, um, I'm, I don't have anything against the fitness industry. Obviously I still love fitness, but I did kind of have this mentality of like, I just have to almost punish my body in order to get it to be where I need it to be or where I want it to be. And, you know, I've had to pay the consequences, you know? And so I am, my mindset has absolutely shifted now. Like whatever I am doing, um, even if I don't fit in the skinniest jeans, I am focused on my long-term health, Mm -hmm. my longevity, my, you know, my strength and just my actual like also just peace of mind too. Yeah. So all of this is just so important. So yeah, I think that it's it's, it's crazy. Um, I was with a group of women about a year ago at a retreat. Um, and a lot of these women were women that were, you would look at and think, their models. Like they're just absolutely these beautiful women. And every, I was shocked because like almost every single one of them was using Ozempic and they were doing these little shots. And so they're all talking about this. And I'm just, you know, I'm this observer. Like I'm Mm -hmm. trying really hard because of course I have tons of opinions and thoughts on this. And I'm like, they're going to ask me, but they're not going to want to hear what I have to say. So I'm just going to listen to what they're saying. But I just thought it was fascinating because here are these women who actually didn't have a a lot of weight to lose, but still their mindset was that they Mm -hmm. needed to and that they 
wanted to jump on this bandwagon. They wanted to be able to get a little bit better, but we couldn't go. We were up in the mountains in Idaho. We couldn't go hiking for very long because people couldn't be away from a bathroom, you know, for that long. And (laughs) they were lethargic. They were, you know what I mean? They were feeling nauseous. They had diarrhea. It was, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just wanted to just say, guys, look at this and see, like, is this something that you're really needing? And is this something that you really want? Is this the lifestyle that you guys are hoping for? And is this going to be forever? It's decreasing their quality of life, not increasing their quality of life. Yeah. And that's, that's crazy. But you know, I get it too, because I'm a diagnosed exercise addict. I yeah. blew my back out at 29 doing yeah. the cardio bunny thing. Yeah. And I get that mentality. I'm glad that, you know, that mentality is still there. Mm-hmm. I fight it to... a lot. Yeah, of, I get and especially that. when you see something, because I get it. I get mm-hmm. wanting to trying to get skinny. And it just seems like no, no matter what size we are, mm-hmm. it just seems like it's never enough. And we have to make peace with our bodies. We have to make peace with our body types. I have legs. I have a butt. Yeah. It's the way it is. Thanks genetics. Mm-hmm. And I've now embraced it because you know what? I know those legs. Mm-hmm. I know those glutes are going to keep me from falling. Yes. I know it's able, I can go on my power walk every single day and be fine. And we need to change the narrative to being skinny, to being strong, to yes. being healthy and still look at that longevity. And when we can start changing that, that's mm. when things will fall in place for females. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you guys, when you get to that place, let me just tell you, it is happiness. It is yeah. happiness. You aren't just a victim to all of these symptoms and you know, trying to just control things that really um, don't necessarily need to be controlled. Your body is designed to know how to regulate, to know mm-hmm. how to keep you in a healthy state. It's when we start like trying to manipulate it, it's when everything kind of goes awry. And so it's so important that we trust our own bodies and recognize that there is a lot that we can do. So I have absolutely want to talk about some of the things that we feel like are the most important things that we can do in order to have the same benefits as using Ozempic, but even better. You know, like <laughs> it's it's like Ozempic even better. Like the better, we should do commercials about it. You know, I don't think that we would make much money because all of these things are free basically, but yeah. What are some of the, um, the most important things that you recommend to your clients that they start implementing in their lives? So you can, you can stimulate the GLP one hormone naturally. It's in your gut and protein. Yeah. You can do it with protein. It doesn't have to be a steak. It, you know, we can even do vegan as long as you're getting the protein. And that is a key. The other thing is Whole foods, meaning that, not the grocery store, meaning whole foods, natural state, real foods, and working on having protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Not the processed fats, not the processed carbohydrates, fruits, vegetable, grains, olive oil, avocado oil. When you get back to the basics, when you get back to the natural foods, your body will work so much better better. Yeah. And when you balance your blood sugar, one, guess what? You're going to start losing inflammation. Yes. Your A1C will be better. Your mm-hmm. cholesterol will be better. Your blood pressure will be better. You're now preventing disease. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want. So yeah. So I would say definitely one is protein. Two, mm-hmm. sleep. Yeah. So underrated. I know. I know. We talk about it a lot here, but I, we can't talk about it enough. It's so important. And it's such key to all of this when it comes to our hunger hormones and every other sex or any of our hormones. It's sleep. We've got to we, pay attention to that. We, as a society, think we have to be busy all the yeah. time. That every minute needs to be filled. Mm-hmm. And that we wear not getting a lot of sleep with a badge of honor. Oh, I only need four hours. Oh, I only need this. Mm-hmm. No, you do need seven to nine hours. Mm -hmm. Your body does need that for resiliency, for health. Hello, decrease Mm -hmm. cortisol, decrease insulin resistance, increase your insulin sensitivity, all of these things. And having sleep hygiene, aka sleep habits, getting to bed at the same time, doesn't matter if it's the weekend or the weekday, having that consistency pays off big time. Big time. 
Big time. I always tell women if they can try to get to bed, and I know this isn't realistic. It wasn't for me for a lot of years when Mm -hmm. I had kids that I was waiting up late at night for, but try to go to sleep around that 10 p.m. time. Mm -hmm. For women especially, that is like this magical hour. It's almost like if you can get to bed at that time, you're you're like aging in reverse. Like it's helping you in all areas of your health. And so it's so important. Try to make that a huge priority. Yeah. The other other thing I would say is move your body daily. So Mm -hmm. walking and then with that, learning how to weight train, Mm -hmm. learning how, whether you're using body weight, whether you're using, you know, resistance bands or actually weight that you're preserving your muscle and adding muscle. Once again, we got decreased insulin sense, uh, insulin resistance, increased Mm -hmm. insulin sensitivity. And the beauty part is that the shape that we want, yeah, that we really think that we want and the size we want is tied to losing inflammation, losing fat, and increasing your muscle. Yeah. It's not losing weight. Every time that you go on a diet and you lose weight, you're not losing body fat. No matter mm-hmm. what anybody says, maybe just a little bit, but it's a little bit of body fat, a lot of water, and a lot of muscle. A and lot that of is slowing your metabolism down every time. And the size that you want has nothing to do with the weight. It has everything to do with your body composition. And the more muscle you have, you'll get there. Yeah. It's like skinny fat, right? Like we don't, people can be skinny, but they can still have so much fat. And it's all goes back to our survival mechanisms that are just built Mm -hmm. in for us. Our body is thinking it's doing us a favor. If we are nutrient deficient, which you will be, if you are doing some kind of quick fix, you know, approach, like maybe using Ozempic or something, you'll be dealing with a lot of nutrient deficiency. You'll be losing the muscle mass, like we've all talked about. And all of this, you know, that is going to make it so that your body is like, oh, I am in some kind of a crisis right now. And so it thinks it's doing you a favor by going after that muscle that's not as needed as that fat store. Mm -hmm. Like the fat is this like, this is our, this is our survival girls. Like we got so so much of the survival food storage just packed away within us. You know, we're going to, we're going to outlive everybody, the more fat we can preserve. And I think people don't really realize that. Like we've got to get ourselves out of this like survival mode. If it is like, we're trying to lose weight or to become a smaller size. I always say, I want people, I want women to weigh the most they can on the scale and just fit mm-hmm. into the smallest clothes. Like the more muscle exactly. mass you have, the better, right? Yeah. So don't, and, don't yeah. think that. I, I mean, I love that. That's exactly what we want. And just throw away the scale. Just get rid of throw it. it away. That number means absolutely nothing. And it changes every day. It just messes with your self-esteem. Honestly, I don't I don't weigh myself either. I just am way more paying attention to um, the way that my clothes are fitting, you know, or I will do usually twice a year, I'll do like a DEXA scan. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do it more often than that. But yeah, paying attention to just overall body um, like composition and just making sure that that's where I'm focused more than just what the scale is saying. And I know they're saying, but, but Amy... They say when I do this program and I, you know, I don't eat, that I'll lose body fat. Um, hello, no, 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 no. Let's go to science, and science is going to say, and your body's going to say, um, no, we're going to hold on to fat, and muscle is much quicker to break down. Yeah. That's where your energy is, and so every time you did that, you lost muscle, which you lost your metabolism, mm-hmm. and then you kept your fat, and that's why every time on a yo-yo diet, that when you start eating normal all the weight came back and it brought friends mm-hmm. because we slowed <laughs> our metabolism friends. down. And then then we hit 45 perimenopause, oh. menopause. And it's kind of like you had to pay your bill now. Everything yeah. that we borrowed from our future is coming up for payment. And Is that the most true thing you could ever say right there? Yep, love yeah. that. And so now it's, time, now it's time to go and put money in the bank and get those reserves. And that is building our muscle so that we can can get to the size that we want so that we can lift the suitcase up to the overhead bin yeah. in the airport. And like you said, it was like, how you're in these beautiful mountains and you can't even take a hike. They wanted to go take naps and they're like no. young and they should be feeling like they could do anything. But yeah, I want to be that old lady that is still like hiking the Grand Canyon Mm -hmm. rim to rim and like doing these adventures, seeing the world. I don't care if I'm not going to look back when I'm 80 years old and be like, yeah, but I was a size two. Like, I just don't think that's a priority for me anymore. I do think that I worried about that a lot when I was in my twenties and thirties. 
but I, I feel like I'm older and wiser now. And I just hope that the ladies that are, the girls that are listening to us today, if you are that girl that's in your twenties and thirties, please, please listen to us. Um, you will thank yourself when you get into your forties, fifties and beyond, because your body is going to be trusting you. It's going to know that you've had your body's back this whole time. And it's going to be able to be in a healthy state for a long time. And that's what it's, this is all about, right? Yeah. And not only that, you're not going to have all the hormone fluctuations in right. perimenopause and menopause because of all the dieting that we did. And if you're in this state now, perimenopause, menopause, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we can get better. We, we're we not destined to be fluffy. We're not destined to have to go on Ozempic. We can do this naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, stimulate these things like the GLP-1 in your with your diet. You talked about protein. Protein is absolutely key. Mm-hmm. Getting in the right amount of fiber too, which our fiber yes. is going to come from our plant-based sources, our whole foods. This is how our bodies have been designed. And this is what how nature can support us. And nature can be really truly our best, you know, prescription. You know, it's it's can replace most pharmaceuticals that are out there if you can just learn how to care and get the what you need, you know, into your body so that your body can, you know, feel its best. That's yeah, what and if, that's what if you're for. not eating and all you're eating is a diet food or you're just not eating at all, then there is no fiber. There is no gut microbiome. You're Mm -hmm. actually hindering your gut microbiome. Well, we do know the gut microbiome possibly has something to do with dementia and Alzheimer's, Mm -hmm. as well as a lot of other disease states. That gut brain, you know, actually, that gut brain. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it always comes back to, it was like, so what's the secret sauce? Yeah. One, you're the secret sauce you because are you decide, <laughs> you decide that you are not going to live this way anymore. You are yeah. going to live a good life and get off the diet roller coaster. Yes. The other secret sauce is you eat real food and you build muscle. Those three things, you eat real food, build muscle. I love it. That's what I want to name this uh, episode. The title should be, You Are the Secret Sauce. Sauce. I love that. That's so good. Okay. I have absolutely loved this conversation. I think this is so helpful. I know that I you know, have a lot of one-off conversations with people. I share a lot of my opinions. When I get onto this podcast, the ladies that are here listening know that I've got your back. I'm going to do the most research I can possibly give you. And I'm going to always try to represent both sides. I love having experts on here like you, Amy. You've really helped us to understand this whole picture so much better. Is there anything else that you would just feel like we need to talk about before we end this episode? I would just say, you know, especially with menopause, because yeah. that's the thing. It's like, but I'm getting all this weight. I'm getting all this yeah. weight. And understand that you can put the brakes on. It's going to take time, but we shouldn't want our 16-year-old body anymore or our 20-year-old. Things have changed. Maybe you had kids, maybe you didn't. Our bodies are not going to be that skinny Kind of, and we would say skinny fat. Mm-hmm. Embrace who you are, and make you the best you that you are today. And yes. if you are feeling good, and you're sleeping well, and you're able to go on a hike, you can pick up thirty five pounds, or your dog, or your grandkids, or your kids. It's all about what how you can live your life to the fullest and your longevity. Mm-hmm. So get off that diet roller coaster, and just. It's a, it's a freedom. It is. Think about get just get rid of those beliefs. It's hard because there's a lot of belief systems that we've had since we were probably 15, 16. Get rid of those beliefs. Know that you can do this and do it for your health and you're well on your way. Oh, so good. Yeah. A lot of those beliefs are fear-based. So mm-hmm. step into your power. Whatever phase or stage or age of life you're in right now, step into your power. Get off the roller coaster. You are the secret sauce. I love yeah. all this. Such an awesome, such an awesome episode. Thank you so much. Well, girls, we love it. Every single week we have really fun episodes that we love putting out there and having conversations like this is so important so that we can be our own best health advocates. We need to understand like what is actually going on with our body and what is out there. What tools can we take hold of to help support our long-term health? That's what it's all about. So thank you for tuning in every single week. If you found this episode helpful, please share it with the girls in your life because sharing is caring. Amy is amazing and I know you women are going to want to connect with her. So I want Amy, before we say goodbye, to tell us all the ways that we can connect with you. I'm going to give you two ways. And I would love to give you what's called a five-day fat loss blueprint. It's great recipes and it has my personal favorite. I have two extra recipes at the end. One is chili and I love Mm. chili. Yeah, me too. And it is, according to my mom, 
She says, this is the Dave Thomas recipe that he used for Wendy's. It's actually a 1973 recipe and it's so good and it's so healthy for you. You can make it in the Instant Pot. So mm. if you want that, um, you can check me out on my website, which is amykwilson.com. That's A-M-Y-K-W-I-L-S-O-N.com. You can send me a message there and just say, you heard me on It's Her Time or and... I will, and tell me about the blueprint. I will send that to you. Or if you are an Instagram person, follow me on Instagram. I go by the nutrition coach pharmacist, the nutrition coach pharmacist. You can send me a message there and I would love to send you that blueprint. I love those recipes. That's so nice. Thank you. I can't wait for that. So we'll put all of the ways that you can connect with Amy in our show notes. Until next week, girls, I hope you have a very happy and healthy week. Talk soon. Bye.